Hey everybody, it's David Nafeld here at Kefiko Kefiko Elementari. Uh, this is our second video that we're gonna be making a pasta with. We had a lot of requests to do cacio e pepe, so we're gonna show you the version here that we make at Kefiko Elementari. Uh, hotly contested point in making uh, cacio e pepe is do you add butter, do you not add butter? Uh, you know, I think I, we've done the research, we've gone all around Lazio, eaten all around Rome, and the truth is some people do and some people don't. So I don't think it's as de, uh, decisive as, you know, yes or no. So here we like to use a little bit of butter. We really like the texture that it brings to the sauce or the pasta. So uh, the products that we use here are a pasta from a company called Gentile. It's a family owned product that is uh, processed in Gragnano, which is the birthplace of extruded pasta near Napoli. We use a Partana olive oil, which is a Sicilian olive oil. We really like for the flavor profile. It's one of the main olive oils we use here at the restaurant. We use this Delizia brand uh, Parma butter, which comes from the same cows that the uh, that produce the milk for Parmesan. Uh, big thing that I wanna share with you guys is here we do all of our pepper uh, cracked fresh. So the key is here, you really, really don't want to uh, blend your pepper in like a uh, electric spice mill because it's gonna powderize it and it's gonna completely overwhelm the flavor of the pasta. Uh, you also don't wanna get pre-cracked pepper from the store because it's gonna lose all of the nuance of flavor. So the telecherry peppercorn is something that, uh, you know, I think is most expressive when you crack it fresh from this, you know, from a pepper grinder. And then we have 30 turns here. So a turn is every time you turn the top there. So we've got 30 turns here in this pan of fresh pepper. Um, you know, with cacio e pepe, you have very few ingredients. So you want each one of them to be present uh, in the flavor profile. You don't want one to be overpowering all the other ones. So first things first, we're gonna put it in the pan here. And we're gonna toast it in the pan. Uh, and what that's gonna do is let out some of the essential oils that are in the, uh, that are in the um, pepper pan. And it's really going to create this vibrant, fruity flavor without overwhelming the entire dish like you know the pre-ground pepper wood. So how you know it's done is you're gonna start getting a little bit of that fragrance and really what it's gonna smell like is a beautiful bouquet. Um, it's gonna have a fruitiness to it. So as that smell starts to come through, before it starts smoking, we're gonna add a little bit of our butter and we're gonna add the olive oil, both at the same time. And you're gonna see them start to kind of sizzle here. And that's also going to start expressing more flavor. And that's gonna stain the pasta with that, that's gonna stain the uh, fat there with that flavor, which in turn is gonna stain the pasta. And that's really important when you're cooking to understand whether something is fat soluble or water soluble and where the flavors are gonna go. That might be TMI for a lot of your home cooks, but the idea is, does the flavor come out more in fat or does the flavor come out more in water? And so with these peppercorns or chilies, I think it's really important to remember that when you're putting them in, when you put them into the fat, it's gonna stain the pasta, which is really gonna carry that flavor over. So we have our pasta down. We do, uh, we do 100 grams of pasta here. Uh, so always making sure that our water is at a rapid boil, salty like seawater, and that you have more than enough space for the pasta to circulate in there and for it not to be super tight because then it's not gonna cook evenly. We have another one that we dropped a little bit ago. This pasta, if you notice, most of these pasta brands will tell you how long to cook pasta for. Uh, somewhere on the label, it will tell you like, you know, 12 minutes. Here, this one says 13. So for me, if it says 13, I'm checking in at 10 because I wanna cook it for a couple minutes in the sauce. So that way we have that time to, for the sauce to really set into the noodle. So what you're seeing here is a foamy butter. You're seeing that peppercorn kind of, you know, float within there and stain the oil. But what you're not seeing is a black oil from either, or the fat from either the fat turning too hot or from the pepper being pre-ground and kind of staining the whole thing. And then you're gonna get like an entirely peppercorn flavor. This is gonna create a really nuanced flavor profile. So the pasta is almost getting to that point where it's, it's cooked. And as the pasta comes out, we're gonna cook it a little bit in the fat. And then at first, I'm gonna let it get coated in all that fat, because that's really what's going to make all the flavor settle into the noodle. 
Then after that, I'm gonna add a little bit of the starchy pasta water. You know, oftentimes people ask, you know, why do you use pasta water? Um, there is a certain element, you know, uh, first of all, the seasoning from it, from the salt, and then also from the starchiness in it, which helps create a little bit of a more homogenous sauce. So I'm gonna add a spoonful, maybe a spoon and a half bowl, and cook my pasta, cook my noodle in here. You know, we like our noodles to have a little bit of bite to them here. Obviously, you're gonna cook it the way you want at home. Uh, you know, varying, you know, levels of al dente is, uh, is appropriate. You know, obviously you don't want to overcook your noodle, but still, even in Italy, when you travel through Italy, you'll see certain regions which prefer their noodles to have more bite. I would say Rome is one of those regions where you see a little bit more bite than other places because they utilize a lot of, uh, dry noodles. So as it's cooking in here, you'll see that the starchiness and the fat are, are coming together and creating a little bit of a sauce and a glaze. I'm gonna add a little bit more liquid to the pan. So right now, the only thing that's in here is we have the butter, the oil, the pepper, the pasta, and a little bit of the water. We're not gonna add any additional salt to this because we have enough salt from the salt water and we're gonna have enough uh, salt from the Pecorino Romano, which is gonna be the cheese that we're using. So Pecorino Romano is a really, really fantastic cheese. But a lot of people don't understand how it differs from, let's say, like another dry cheese like Parmigiano or something or Grana Padano. Pecorino is probably one of the more saltier dry cheeses you're going to use. It has that beautiful kind of crystallized flavor of salt. So it's important for you to recognize that it's going to make your pasta more salty than, let's say, adding Parmesan. So at this point, we have our cheese. It's powdered here in this form. You can kind of create the same uh, product on the side of a box grater. We like it powdered more than we like, let's say, shredded because it's gonna melt into the pasta and into the sauce um, in a little bit more of an equal, homogenous way. Now, when I start adding the cheese to this, I am not going to put the pasta back on the fire. The reason being is because if you put the pasta back on the fire once the cheese is in there, the proteins are gonna coagulate and they're gonna separate from the fat and from the liquid. And you're gonna end up with this super stringy thing. You know how when you make mac and cheese at home and you overcook it, it gets stringy. So that's not what you want here. So once we feel like the pasta is ready, you guys notice I'm adding a little bit more water and I'm cooking it each time a little bit more. Reason being is because I still see the noodles are a little bit more stiff. So once we feel like we're ready to add the cheese to it, we're gonna make sure we have a little bit of sauce, sauce at the bottom. Not too much, right? You don't want uh, you don't want there to be a pool of sauce, but you want enough liquid in there that that's going to help absorb the cheese. And as we're tossing it, it's going to create the sauce. So now I'm going to take my cheese. I'm going to add it in off the heat. That's the timer for our original pasta that we put in. I'm going to add my cheese off the heat, and I'm going to let the uh, leftover heat from the pan and the heat from the noodle be what melts my cheese into my sauce. I'm definitely never gonna put it back on the fire after this. And so stirring is always crucial in this case, like creating your sauce. And you're gonna stir it for longer than you actually think you have to, right? Like at first you're gonna think you're done, but I like to stir it for like a whole other, like maybe 10 to 12 seconds past that point because that's really 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 that's where the nuance in the sauce is going to be made you're going to make it thicker and more luscious and that cheese is going to have a chance to kind of really melt into there so if you notice now we took all that and we made this beautiful sauce right here it's creamy it's coating each noodle it's shiny it looks velvety but it doesn't look greasy and that's a huge key here so basically very simple preparation here we're just gonna twirl it in the pan. Get yourself a pair of long tongs or tweezers like this plating tweezers. You can buy them online. Um, and if you don't have that carving fork will work as well like for carving your meats. You're gonna take this, put it into a hot bowl, making sure that your food stays hot. Take a little bit of our extra cheese left over in the pan there. flavor profile is super delicious. I'm getting that really, really delicate uh, peppercorn. I'm also getting the saltiness from the cheese, but nothing is overwhelming. 
Now I'm just gonna finish a little bit of the top with a little bit more of my pecorino, a crack of pepper. And there we go, folks. This is the Bucatini Cacio e Pepe here at Cafe Coral Take care.